You are now listening to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast. Yes, welcome back. On today's show, we're going to be covering the Mighty West Tigers. What a team. Um, the boys are going to be pushing for the eight this year. And uh, I have no doubt that's going to happen. I'm your host, the Super Coach Brain, and I'm joined by the Super Coach Matrix Bronco supporter. Um, so I think he's going to let me take the reins on this one. What do you reckon? See ya. See you on the <laughs> next show. Bye. No, no, no. no I've, but... got to bring you, I've got to bring you down um, on a few you things. Do. You, you know, have to level you, me. After you say that they're going to finish third, I'm going to be like, maybe I see him finishing fifth. <laughs> Mate, fifth would be great. I'll take fifth. There's no problem with that. Mate, the Tigers, they've done a lot of off-season recruitment. Probably, look, I don't want to be biased, but I think we probably had very close to the best recruitment off-season and in the whole NRL this year. Now, when you go from getting the spoon, which uh, really hurts my soul, to coming into recruiting guys like Api Corusel, Isaiah Papali'i, uh, we get David Nofaluma back, return from loan. So he's, he's learned how to win over there. He's coming back, and hopefully he's going to share that with us. Uh, we've got Charlie Staines from Penrith. We've got David Clemmer from the Knights. We've got John Bateman coming over from the Super League from Wigan. And Brandon Wakeham, who is the mini Benji Marshall I've mentioned in previous pods from the Bulldogs. That is some serious 2023 gains, Matty. Yeah, there's, how do you there's feel about the there. Tigers? Yeah, look, I um, I definitely see them on the improve. They couldn't be much worse. Uh, it's actually impossible to get worse, considering we came last last year. So uh, the worst thing is like looking at a lot of their gains. I love, but a lot of their losses, I think, are going to be good rotational players. But I think they really hit it out of the park with a couple of them. Yeah, so with the losses, we've lost Luke Garner, who is probably the one person I'm really disappointed about losing. I feel like if we kept him on an edge we would have been in a really good spot. Um, but he's off to the Panthers. He's going to really capitalise off that Jerome Luai connection, um, obviously with Viliami Kikau moving on. We've lost Cal Matua Lungi, who I'm not disappointed about at all. He's gone over to Manly. And he's gone over north of the uh, the Harbour Bridge, and he can stay there for all I care. Um, we've lost Zane Musgrove, who ended up being sin-binned more than he ended up ta- ha- making tackles last year. So <laughs> he, can, he can stay at the Dragons. And we've lost jo- – actually – Jock Madden, I'm really disappointed about that you should be stoked about going over to the Broncos. I'm excited. Yeah, I would be too. He's he's a serious talent. He's going to be good. Um, we've lost James Tarmow, who will ride the bench over at the Cowboys. Oliver Gildart, who's going to be at the Dolphins. Uh, Jacob Little, we spoke about on the Dragons pod. Head back, listen to that one. Um, I don't mind Jacob Little this year. We've lost yeah, Tyrone he's not, PG. He's not necessary with Happy there now. So, like, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Your loss is so, your gain in itself. So. Correct. Absolutely. And take uh, Coruscant over Jacob Little every day. <laughs> uh, we've lost Tyrone Peachy to the back to the Panthers, uh, and we've lost Jackson Hastings, who, again, I was probably disappointed about losing. But, again, when you when you look at – you've got Adam Dewey, you've got Luke Brooks in the halves. I'm, I'm fine with it. I can live with it. Um, that's not an issue for me. So before we dive into the 1-17, to Matty, I just wanted to give a shout-out to our supporters uh, of the podcast over at ANZ PLTK. Um the guys obviously over there are, are doing some great stuff in the NBA 2K23 realm. Um, so if you're on PS5 and you play NBA 2K23, like we try to do uh, over here. <laughs> not um, very well. No, not very well. But if, you, if you're if you a decent player or even if you just want to get five mates together, you want to go and you want to have a, a few games that are a bit more competitive than heading into the wreck, you're a bit stuck with ran- matching up with randoms in the wreck. I, you know, nothing worse really personally. Um, so – Hit the boys up at uh, on Twitter at ANZPL2K, and they'll uh, they'll help you out. They'll talk to you about how you can get involved in that competition, how you can put a team together, and how you can go in the running to win. I think it's uh, over six grand. I think for the the season coming up, so they're just moving into their eighth season now, which is great for a, for a league of that length um, to go on that long. So the boys have done the great job over there, Maddie. Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. And, like, you see people grow into it. Like, it's just consistently, it's just playing. Mate, let's get back to the NRL Supercoach. Now, let's go through this 1-17. to 17. Now, honestly, when I look at this 1-17, to 17, there could be about 13 different things that happen in this squad. So that because of so much off-season movement, we're really unsure about how things are going to line up. But we've got a good indication of what's going to happen with this uh, with the trials this, this weekend. At the moment, the way I see it lining up, 
We see Dane Laurie at the fullback. I don't see Charlie Staines there. I feel like Laurie is going to be the fullback. He's going to get first go at it. Um, then on the wings, we've got Charlie Staines, Tommy Talia, uh Brent Naden, David Nofaluma, wings and centres. So Staines and Nofaluma on the wings, Talia and Naden in the centres. Uh, we've also got Stafford Toa and Asu Kapoa, who are really biting at the heels of Charlie Staines. Because I, I feel like he could actually miss out in week one. So I'm not... Well, we'll leave that there and we'll see how things line up on the weekend. Uh, we've got Adam Dewey and Luke Brooks in the halves. We've got Stefano Utuikamanu and we've got David Klemmer at prop. We've got Api Korosau at hooker. We've got Isaiah Papali'i and John Bateman at this stage. Now, John Bateman's obviously had some issues with his visa and his police check getting into Australia. So the, the information I have at the moment is that the only thing holding up John Bateman's visa is the fact that his police check hasn't come through based on a lag on our end in Australia, which is a concern um, because he's not going to get any sort of work under his legs before the season starts. So there's a good We're chance that he probably... We're only a couple weeks out now. He eases into his work. He could come off the bench to start the season to get some um, Ks under his legs, which is a concern for me. So you don't even start with him, not a chance. But in saying that, we'll talk about him a bit later. And then we've got Joe Offerhangawi at lock. And then on the bench, we've got Jake Simkin, Fanua Pole, Sean Bloor, and Alex Twal, who is going to score his first try this year. I am telling you now. <laughs> hot take. He will. That's one of my hot takes, mate. I've got many hot takes about this team. Don't you worry. They're going to come later. Um, Here's the mic. But no, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Um, mate, I feel like it'll happen. But we've also, in, in uh, I suppose, we've got Stafford Toa and Asuka Poa could easily come into the centres or the wings. Now, Tommy Talao, I want to say, looked very ordinary in defence last week in the trials. So he's a very close watch this week. He's a very leaky uh, on defence. So I think, honestly, um, if they don't see what they want to see from Tommy Talao, regardless of how potent he is on offence, he could easily find himself out of the team at 12% owned, 301k, okay. um, to a guy like Asu Kapoa who really impressed last week. Yeah, right. So um, I was I was looking, and so we did our notes a little while back, and it was actually before the first trial. Talao and Staines have both come down in percentage owned dramatically in just one week. I'll have a chat about some guys on the Tigers that after that first that first trial uh, have gone up dramatically. But, yeah, a lot of people watch that fend off Charlie Staines and uh, Tommy Talao's defense being terrible. And... Yeah, old grass stains has been dropped and Tommy Talao has been dropped. And, um, yeah, there's an uptick on some of the other blokes. So, like, in one week that has changed just from people watching one fake Tigers game. Grass stains got dropped metaphorically and physically. <laughs> um, so, mate, it's not good. Uh, to be honest, personally, I'm not looking at Charlie Stains at all, but we'll, we'll talk about that soon. I have them yep. finishing 12th. How do you see them finishing? Yeah, I've actually got them. 12th straight again. Look at us, Grant. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Mate, we've done it two, two pods in a row. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I want to preface for everybody that is listening or watching us on YouTube that we don't talk about where we're placing our teams before we hop on. This is an absolute lottery as to how we're going to, how we're going to play this out. So um, great minds think alike, Matty. I'd love to disagree with you, but I just see him being that little bit better without entering the eight. There we go. Yeah, I, I can't see us entering the eight. We're, we've got a year of development. We've got a year of cohesion. We're going to find some combinations. And then once we get to that point where, you know, we get through a season, we finish 12th or 11th or whatever it be, um, we can start to push for ninth spot again like we have for the last 17 years. Oh, so You can have our spot. <laughs> <laughs> mate, we'll, we'll happily swap with you if you like. Um, mate, do we or don't we is my first boom. Um, we're going to have to find the, the sound drop for this. Boom shakalaka! Adam Dewey. Now, Adam Dewey is, correct me if I'm wrong here, he's in 50, no, that's not right. He's got to no, be in 20 plus percent of teams. No, only 17%, only 17%. He's went up 2% since we, did, since we did our notes a week ago. Yeah, right. Okay, all right. So I was thinking he was going to be higher than, yeah, 16.7. I was, I was thinking he was going to be higher than that. He's in my team. He's not coming out. Now, I've got the Dewey-Burton combination in the 5-8. I don't, I don't see myself changing that. Um, 
for me, that's a lock, absolute lock. With with Dewey now, I don't know whether anybody subscribed to NRL Physio um, on Patreon. It's worth doing because it's five dollars a month. I'm going to give a shout out to the NRL Physio because the guy's an absolute genius with what he does. He gives you a really good insight into, uh, I guess, the the way that players are tracking the response from rehab for certain players, and also at the end of the day, like if you've got a guy coming back in the second year back from an ACL Rico, like we spoke about last podcast with uh, the New Zealand Warriors and Tohu Harris, he. NRL Physio is huge on the fact that there's going to be a big increase in workload and a big increase in work rate in year two back from an ACL rehab. So let's let's look at Adam Dewey from last year, excluding the first three games that he started at centre when he was working back into his work. He averaged 72 for the season. Now, if you add 72 in for the season, I think he ends up being the third highest scoring 5'8 for the season last year if you exclude those three uh, three games. So, yep. For me, that's an absolute lock-in. He's goal kicker. He's a leader within the pack at West Tigers. We know that they've named Abby Corusau as the captain, but Adam Dewey will pretty much be or have as much responsibility as Abby Corusau. So I'm a, I'm a very big fan of Dewey, and I uh, I think he's in your team as well. Is that yeah, right? yeah. You you actually talked me around. I didn't have him. I had I had Burton. You've talked me around to Burton and Burton and Dewey. I was looking to go cheap in at five eighth. But honestly, almost the perfect antipod for Matt Burton. I think there's very minimal risk in spending 600K with Dewey being there. Do we or don't we? We do. We do. We do. He's goal Absolutely. kicker. West Tigers have just got so much better. They're going to be scoring more tries. Like 17th to 12th is a big surge. I know it's not where they really want to be, but it is a big surge. It's a lot of extra tries. It's a lot of extra opportunity at goal kicking. He's coming back. He's got better ball players coming off him. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. Mate, throw a ring on me. (laughs) He's in my team. But if we go to my boom, um, it actually kind of comes from the fact that he's gone up 10% in the last week, and it's Stefano, and I'm not even going to try and say his last name. Uh, he just looks so great in that trial. He looked fantastic. He looked like the best player on the park in that trial. And he's he could be in the cheapy section for his price. He, he's only 319K. He came into my team as soon as he finished that, that trial game. Stefano, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name, is a <laughs> seriously good player. Um, like we saw the work rate that he had in a trial game. He obviously had a point to prove. He obviously had something that was making him play like that. We know how hungry he is off the back of consecutive injuries and short cut seasons. So he he wants to prove a point this year, and I feel like he's a guy that you could easily have as your second front row forward player that just plays all year, gets himself to 500K, and you can either upgrade him or just chuck him on the bench and use him as a reserve when you need to. How often do you have a stab at a guy for 300K that is poor because of form? This guy was is cheap because he was injured. Yep. You know, in in those in those losses, like who they lose? Like was it Clemmer? Like you've got big shoes to fill, but oh no, they gained Clemmer. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, but they've lost a lot of guys in their forward pack. Say Tarmow, for example. You you can see this man stepping up and being as good as him, as at least as good as he was last year. Yeah, Tom has a game for us by sending him <laughs> off. That's, yeah, I know, um, but he was – but, like, there's a big role for Stefano to just step into by him massive. going. Yeah. But this is a natural progression for him. This is a perfect opportunity for him to take the bull by the horns and go, you know what, this is my starting front row position. I'm going to lead this pack. I've got David Clement to mentor me. I'm in a really good position to be uh, – to progress as a football player. Um Mate, if he doesn't take a step forward this year, I'll never talk him at it, uh, talk about him again <laughs> in my super coach team because this is ultimate position for him to be a uh, quality player this year. I, I think he's the only player through all these pods that he could legit be my boom, my smoky, like and my cheapy. Like he could just be, he could just be it all. He's not going to be fast. But uh... speaking of speaking of smokies. <laughs> now we've got the master. The master Bateman. Now I am the master. <laughs> Johnny Bateman averaged 72 and 70 in 2019 and 2020. 
He had a base of 52 in 2020 and a base of 55 in 2019. He's got a huge motor. The bloke plays 80 minutes most weeks on an edger in the middle, and he's actually tipped to be playing either lock or right edge. So he's either going to be playing off Dewey or he's going to be playing through the middle of the field. Now, there's a lot of unknowns after three years out from the NRL. We know that he's gone and played in the Super League, and actually last year he had a really poor season in the Super League last year. But you've got to look at pedigree. We know that the guy's just an incredible player. I'm very excited about what he's going to do for us in the orange because what he did in the lime green in Canberra was nothing short of very impressive. Um, So if he can bring half of that form across to the Tigers, I think he's going to be a really influential figure within the squad, whether it be leadership or whether it be on-field performance. How do you see Johnny Bateman going? In my first draft, he was one of the first guys I added. And then I sort of just started to tamper my expectations. I was just like, oh, he's been gone for – that was – that was a little bit longer than I than I remembered. And then I was like, he's priced off 56 average. But you do get three weeks to have a look at it. He was a guy that I did want first up. And then I started looking around the forward pack and it was just, there was a lot more unknowns than knowns with him. And that worried me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not starting with him. I want to go ahead and say that he's not in my team right now, but he's someone I'm keeping a very close eye on to see how he starts the season because there's a good chance with the visa issues he starts off the bench. So perfect scenario, he drops 100, 150K. You can pick him up for 550 to 500K, and you can basically hold him for the season once his workload picks up. That's a a win-win. You'd be happy. You'd be happy. Mate, who's your – do you have a Smokey for this team? Yeah, honestly, like Stefano was what I was looking at. Like I have a couple guys from this from this team there. Um, I think they're one of those teams that is kind of doing what I'm doing where they've gone cheap in the wing and stacked elsewhere. Um, yeah, Stefano is basically all I've all I've got looking. Stefano and um, Stefano and Dewey. How about your bus, mate? Mate, I think it's the same as you actually, and it's uh, and it's Charlie Staines. Um, even if he was at fullback, I'm just not super convinced that he's that good. Like, like he was a buy, and he's come in, and I just think that they could have been looking better. Like, I understand that they're going to try and you know, recreate. There's guys that come from that Penrith pedigree and are they going to be great? But yeah, he hasn't been that good when he's come in. I think I'd be stealing one of your notes when I said he averaged 40 on the right wing for Penrith in 2021. If he's at the wing, you have zero interest. If he's at fullback, then maybe he becomes a bit of a ball player, but is he that exciting? He's that awkward price too. Like he's not cheap. Yeah. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. For me, it's the only place that I see Staines lining up is on the wing. But again, like when you look at when you look at this squad, we've got David Northaluma on the right wing. No one's coming in for David Northaluma. On the left, there's a good chance that a guy like Stafford Toa or Asa Kapoa can come straight into that team. And it's probably the way that I see it lining up, to be honest. I don't see Charlie Staines in this team. Um, yeah, not a fan. Not a fan. Like you said, average 40 on the right wing for Penrith, the best fucking lineup in the, in the whole competition. There's an, if you can't average 60 plus for the best team in the competition for two years in a row, you're probably not going to be good uh, as a wooden spooner. So yeah, um, that's unfortunately the um, the facts for Charlie Staines. Like the, like the, the thing about this pod for me is – with how much I've enjoyed watching the West Tigers over the last couple of years, which has been zero. So I'll let you do a lot of, lot of the research in here. Um, but looking at cheapies, you, you've had me looking at, um, at Matamua. Um, I know that you're looking at another second rower there, but, uh, but what do you think, mate? Where do, where do you see yeah, the yeah. second rowers going with these guys? Because there are a few opportunities with them spending all the money on, on Papalihi and, you know, you've got some guys coming into the team like Bateman. Uh, what do you see happening in the second row? Lead from yeah, me. no, I yeah, yeah, I agree with you. With Matamua could easily be that ball playing lock that the Tigers have been looking for for the last five seasons. I feel like they're not going to start there. I feel like Joe O, Joe Offahengiawi, is going to start at lock to start the season. I feel like they need that big body. They want that really powerful forward pack. They need that go forward to get make sure that Brooks and Dewey 
get good field position. But honestly, Matamua probably overplayed his hand in the first week of the trials. He probably made too many passes, too many offloads. He made a couple of errors that were definitely forced errors um, that didn't help. Now, the, the guy I'm really high on at the moment is Sean Bloor. Now, everyone's talked about how he's the next big thing at the Tigers. Two years ago, he was the next big thing at the Tigers. He just hasn't been able to break into that squad. He's uh, been out of the squad due to injury. He did his ACL last year, the poor guy. Um, so we know that he's going to start relatively slow, but he's had a full season or in a full off season of rehab. I do like Sean Bloor. I like what he's about. I feel like he can absolutely make cash. The thing is, are there other cheapies in the second row position, as he's not a jewel, that will do a better job? And the answer is yes. So at the moment, he's not in my side. But if he starts on an edge at the Tigers, I'd be very, very tempted. How about you? So a week ago, he was 15% owned. And I believe he got a misdemeanor or something. He's popped back 3 or 4% in just the last week. Uh, he's actually, I was one of those blokes. He has dropped out on my team. I love the second row forward for cheapies because I think you can just get a guy out of reserve grade. They step up and they step into a really decent role. He's going to be a wait and see for me. I might be waiting until round three till I see where the role goes. When I see where Johnny Bateman's going to properly fit into this team after after two weeks, after three weeks, and he could be in my team, but yeah, not not to start. Would you call him a Robbie K? Watch this space right now, Robbie K. Watch this space. I like it. I'm going to actually find a sound bite of Rob saying "Watch this space," <laughs> and we're going to play it in the pod because that's elite play. <laughs> Um, mate, lastly, tell us your hot take. That's hot. Mate, this is the West Tigers. I want you to take the floor. Mate, I was going to say, don't offend me. All right, be very careful what you say here. I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very careful. I'm aware that you're not a Dragon supporter and you don't expect <laughs> to, to be in the top ten, but... Um, I'm going to leave it leave it to you. You have watched more Tigers games than in the last year than I have watched since they were relevant, since Benji Marshall was playing for them. So. Fair call. Fair call. Lead the way. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. <laughs> Adam Dewey finishes a top five, five, eight this year. That's my call. I feel like the Tigers don't make the eight. The reality is I'm a very realistic Tigers supporter. If you haven't listened to previous podcasts and you're new here, firstly, welcome. Thanks for listening. Um, Adam Dewey, we know how good he is. If he was on a top four team, he would be probably the highest scoring 5'8 in the competition. But he's in the Tigers. Now, we're expecting the Tigers to finish 12th. There's so many new combinations. They're going to take a few rounds to get going. He's, there's a good chance he may start a little bit slower than what his season average ends up. Could be a little sloppy in the first half of the season, to be honest. We, I mean, look, we're, we're asking him to combine with players that he's never combined with before, that he's never played with before. I know they've obviously had training for the last few months, but we need to remember and not have our expectations at a point where we think this guy's going to come out and be Cameron Munster in the first four weeks. Um, we know Isaiah Papali has also moved to the left edge. So he's going to be working with a guy like Sean Bloor, potentially, if he gets that right edge role. Now, that's going to take some time to develop cohesion and develop a relationship there on that right edge. So he will start slow, but I feel like he's going to be a top five, five, eight by the end of the year. That's my that's my hot take. I don't even think that's that spicy. <laughs> it's probably not, to be fair. But as a Tiger supporter, I want to have a win. All right? So don't take <laughs> this away from me because we haven't had many wins in the last – 17 years? Yeah, like, the thing is, like, when we got to the Dragons, we had nothing to talk about. When we got to the Tigers, you've watched so many Tigers games, but I think Adam Dewey is the one guy on the Tigers that everybody's always always looking at. He had that great year a couple years ago. Um, yeah, let's just see him replicate it. And, you know, it could we could be just talking about Munster, you know, Dewey, uh, Burton. Like, we could be talking about just those three coming, like, really. Um, and you've got Dill Brown. Throw Dill Brown in there somewhere. He'll be, yeah, he'll be top true, five. True. I'm just um, not looking but, at him because of his price because I think that you can get Dill Brown value out of Dewey. So, Do you feel like he drops to 600K and you look at him? 
Oh, definitely. If, honestly, if anybody that's that's pushing eight hundred k drops to six hundred k, you get excited. But I'm I'm not sure. I reckon I'd nearly drop Burton before Dewey step coming into that because you do want any pod. If Dewey was the guy that was forty percent owned, I'd be saying saying the opposite. But you have to have those point of yep. differences, and uh, we've probably talked longer than I expected about the West Tigers. 25 minutes. It's because I'm so passionate about the Tigers being so bad. You know, like I, I, I'm used to being the Tigers being terrible. Yep. So it's good to see that we've done some good recruitment. So hopefully we can get a couple of wins up this year. Yeah, man. Mate, that'll that'll do us. Thanks for joining me. Um, obviously, for anybody who's enjoyed me talking trash about the Tigers for 26 minutes, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure you turn those notifications on and follow us on all the podcast platforms. Thanks for joining us. You've listened to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast, and we'll see you next episode. See you, Cheers. Mate. Bye.